Deroy Cruz here, your life applications officer. Yeah. Can't wait. Got all my stuff packed for my vacation. Tomorrow I'm going on vacation. And uh, this is a video I've been meaning to do for a couple days now. Um, I tried to do it yesterday and it was too long and I said some things that I didn't mean to say. Um, I'm going to try to keep it simple. Um, because I'm hard on black folks and a lot of you that watch me, and I mean, I've made enemies. Um, I've made enemies. Uh, for being honest about black America and what's going on. Um, I've made enemies um, and uh, I've some people, they don't like me, even though they're like me as far as personality and politics go and character. They just think that you don't have a right to say anything. White people don't have a right to say anything about black America. And black folks don't have anything to say about black America. And anything that white people ain't allowed to do or shouldn't be allowed to do. Oh, God help you. God help you. If black folks say something. Okay. Um, so. But the fact of the matter is. Black America. Is very problematic. It really is. Black America is truly honestly problematic. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. At the beginning of this video, this short video, that's all I'm going to say. Now, I'm saying this because some conservatives believe that racism does not exist. Racism does exist because... Um, Racism is natural. If evil exists, then racism exists. Okay? If evil exists, then racism exists. Okay? Um, but many conservatives will try to say that there's no such thing as racism, like just Lee Peterson. He'll try to say there is no such thing as racism. Okay? Um, that's not necessarily true. Let me tell you what racism is. Now, I know a lot of you think I'm not qualified to say what racism is. But I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to give you my interpretation. Racism is when someone feels that You are not one of God's children. That you are not um, your race of people is a lower race of people. Your race of people is is um expendable okay that's racism now have we come a long way since someone in white skin or another color of skin in this country have said that publicly on television or whatever have they you know you know what I'm saying 
you know, back when we had the black zoos, you know, it's been a long time. Back when we had Jim Crow, it's been a long time. There were people that said right on network television that black people were expendable. That we can live without them. And there today there are still people that believe that. They just won't say it like they used to say it. But what they do today is like Joe Biden, you know, and 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 you know unless a person is adopting black children or married to somebody black. Okay. You don't know who believes that black people are expendable because the nicest among us, you go to work, your employer is very nice to you. Here are signs that people don't think that you are of the same nature as them. Here are signs. One sign is that when people baby you, you need to hear this, black folks. When people baby you and they act like they have to help you do everything, or they act like everything that they do, they're babying you. That's a sign of a racial attitude. This whole idea, oh, I'm not going to tell you more than once. If I have to repeat myself, we have a problem. How many times have you heard that on a job? You people. I shouldn't have to repeat myself to you people. We've come a long way, but, but some guys like me have heard this back in the day on a job. And, and some jobs, they're still it. They're, you know, at my job, there are people who who watch us closely when black folks get together. What? Okay. If I talk to a white person, to some people, that's a little bit cartoonish. But if I talk to a black person, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. What are they talking about? Oh, here we go. They, shouldn't, they be, shouldn't they be working? Okay. For example, here's another sign on a job. When everybody's allowed to BS... But, what, but black folks are getting together talking to each other too much. Even if we talk for two seconds, too much. I've had supervisors on my job. I'm a supervisor. I'm the supervisor talking to my own employee. And people have come up to me and tried to act like everybody needs to break up and go do their job. But we're all on lunch break. One person, he works there. He's allowed to be there because he can be there and do his job at the same time. The other two of us, we're on a lunch break or some kind of break. And this guy that has nothing to do with my department wants to come over there and act like, oh, we all just quit our job and decide to go sit out on picnic tables because it's a nice day. This must be a black thing. Why don't you go do your job? And if you feel like you're not allowed to BS, on the job, that's your that's your that's your your thing. Don't try to act like we can't BS when everybody's BS and everybody's everybody's taking break. Nurses and doctors and and housekeepers and 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 uh, you know um, students and and all these people are getting together and talking. And they're talking in between jobs. They're talking in between duties. They are killing time by talking to one another. So I know what it feels like to be pay too much attention to because of the color of my skin. I know what it feels like to 
be separated from the general population every day of my life. People are separating us. You know, I told you the story about how I got on um, the bus. And they're a real pretty Indian girl, and I don't even, I'm not, I don't have, I have a little bit of an issue with Indian people in the first place. Okay, a little bit, a little bit of an issue, issue with, with Indian people, Air, Indian Arab people, and I'll do a video on that. But later on, maybe after my vacation time, I'll explain that. But this little lady felt that she needed to address me about my mask on the bus. And... I notice her, she decided to pay attention to the fact that a lot of black people don't cover their faces completely when they wear their mask. Okay? She decided to pay attention to that. And so she was so used to doing that, that when I got on the bus, I said something to the bus driver, and when I sat in my seat, my headphones caught into my mask, and my mask started to slide off my nose a little bit while I was trying to unwind my headphones out of my mask, and she's showing me how to wear a mask. She's, she's sitting over there, she's showing me how to wear a mask, and I put my mask back over my nose, which I was going to do in the first place as soon as I got my headphones out of my mask. You know, people are so, so watching black people so much. They forget that we're in a restaurant, dude. You can't eat and wear a mask at the same time. We're sitting down at the table. You know, I was, I was eating something the other day and uh, I was talking to a friend and this was on a job too. And this guy walked past me and he saw me eating. And I had my mask down here because I was I was, you know, drinking coffee and I was eating peanuts. And the other guy, he's talking to me, and while he's talking to me, his mask, he's a white dude, he's a friend of mine, his mask is falling off his nose. So he didn't even look at him at all. He just looked straight at me. And look, black folks, I know, I know that regardless of what a lot of my conservative Republican friends are saying, they know and they cover it up because they're afraid that if you don't cover it up, okay, You'll you'll ruin it. You'll you'll ruin it for us, and and you will. If you decide to point out every little, you know, white mistake, so to speak, okay, that white people do around black people, we'll never get anywhere. This is the way my life is every day with white people. That's it. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not going to make a big deal a big issue. Okay. Um, the dude didn't know I was eating peanuts. He know he he didn't know that I'm allowed to eat on the job. My mask is coming off. If I want to eat peanuts while I'm eating, I'm allowed to take my mask off. He forgets that everybody, he, you so busy watching black people. We know you got some racist attitudes when you think that black folks, when you think that black people are supposed to wear a mask and eat at the same time. Okay? You, dude, there's, I'm eating. And, and, and there were times when I had to stop and say, Oh, 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 yeah, that's right. Oh, oh, oh. You're paying too much of attention. You're looking for something 
to be stereotypical or you're looking for me to give you reasons to have a problem with me. And you'll see this on a job a lot. White people waiting for black people to give them reasons to dislike them. But then you got the other kind of white people who no matter what you do, they don't like you. Now, real racism, and I've talked about real racism in other videos. Real racism is if, if I'm running the business and I got entrepreneurs working under me, and, and even though most of them are white, if you're really, really a racist, if you're really a racist, you won't be a part of my company because there are black people running the company. Just like when Barack Obama was in office, there were a lot of Democrats that did not vote that year, or they voted Republican that year. Of course, they voted for other Democrats that were non-black. They didn't vote for Obama, but they voted for other Democrats, okay? But they are Democrats, but they didn't want to vote for Obama. They voted for everybody but Obama. And when, and you know, um, when Obama lost, they actually sent threats to Obama. Now, when Obama was in office, I did not like Obama. But I know that Obama, I know from my end, listening to YouTube, listening to TV, listening to people on the street, that a lot of people were upset that a black man was running for president. And they were definitely upset when he won and they were openly, they didn't put this on the news, but they openly said it. I've had people even suggest to me, hey, Cruz, do you think we really need a black president? Come on, man. And they tried to use, again, here we go with that, waiting for black people to, before this man even got in office and did anything wrong, they started like hating on the man and, and assuming what he would do wrong. I hope you ain't going to get in office and start pushing affirmative action. I hope you ain't going to get up there in office and start, you know, uh, telling black people they're victims and blah, 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 blah. And what really puzzles me about white people is like, now I've had friends who will actually punish white people if they show any signs of um, racial behavior when they're around me. I got friends like that. One of them just died, okay, from COVID, okay? But most white people don't separate themselves, and this is a big problem in America. This is a big problem in America. Most white people won't separate themselves. I can understand, you know, um, if you're married to, you know, a, a, a husband who is racist or you're married to your, a wife who's racist. And I, I got friends, even in the church, believe it or not, I got friends in the church who marry white women and their wives don't like me. Their wives don't want me around them. They don't, their wives, they, they, they invite, their wives invite all these white guys over the house, okay, and cook dinner for him and, and all this, but he come over and say hi to me. As soon as he turn his back, she come over to me, hey, ain't your people over there? Huh? This happened at a Christian event in, in Arnold, PA one time. I was there, and my stepdaughter's a grown woman. Okay? And she didn't even know I was going to be there. I wanted to surprise my stepdaughter. This woman ruined the surprise. Um, but I ran into a friend of mine that was there, and he showed me pictures of his, his fiance, but now he wanted me to meet her in person. When I met her, she really didn't 
Willie really want to shake my hand, I could tell. And then, um, I went my way because I wanted to eat. You know, I'm a carnival person. I don't care about all them games and all that stuff. I want to eat. I'm coming here to enjoy the food. So I went to go enjoy the food, and he's calling me over to him. He's like, hey, 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 D-Roy, come here, come here, come here, come here, man. Hey, man, I've been trying to talk to you. He's calling me over there. And me and him would be talking, and he would say, hey, I'll be right back. And he would go over there and shake hands with this other dude. You know, here she come. Hey, ain't your people over there? I says, what, you mean my stepdaughter? She says, yeah, I see your little, little grandson running around. You know, he might get hurt or something. I says, no, he's fine. He sees me over here. He can come over here and hang out with granddad if he want. You know, um... Oh, I ain't, yeah, I just figured you want to be over there with your people. I mean, come on, like, is that not, is, 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 do we have a problem here? Like, all I'm saying is, black folks, when I tell you, when I tell you that I'm a Republican, when I tell you that, you know what I'm saying, I don't support Black Lives Matter and all like that. It doesn't mean that I don't suffer like you do. It doesn't mean I can't identify with your pain. I'm just telling you that we're going about it all wrong. And those are just some examples that that I wanted to cover. Um, but racism does exist. And what racism is, like I said, you have racism where um, racism, what racism is not, racism is not stereotypes. That's not racism. Racism is not fear. Being afraid of black folks is not racism. Okay? If people are afraid of you, they're afraid of you for a reason. If people don't trust you, they don't trust you for a reason. Okay? I think more white people are afraid of black politics than they are afraid of black skin. And I'm going to tell you something. We don't need black politics in this country. Black politics is, needs to be between black victims who feel they are victims, they need to just share that with their little small group of friends. They don't need to share that with everybody. Everybody doesn't need to be indoctrinated with that garbage. But there's no such thing as black politics. If you got black politics, then that's why we got problems in America. We don't need black politics. There are no black politics. Get rid of your black politics. Because if I say white politics, you know exactly what that is. Okay? Or you have your own interpretation of that. So stop with the black crap. Okay? That's your own worst enemy. And I'm going to say that again. Black people are still their own worst enemies. Even though I just display to you some of the things that we all go through every day. But yet, on the flip side of that, there are a lot of black people that don't know how to go and take a break without taking an hour. Break is a half an hour. Why are you taking an hour? Why are you still outside on the phone? Okay? You know, why 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 every time black people why do black people gotta hang out together all the time and put on a show and act crazy and, and you know, there are things that go down on a job that make people stereotype you. And it's not this because a lot of my white friends have told me over and over again, they wish they had my tan. I've been told that since I was a child. God, I wish I had your tan. Some of them even wish they had my hair. Okay? And they're dead serious, if I want to believe that. And yes, I do believe that. Okay? So it's not this. Okay? That people... Hey, it's 
it's black politics. It's black politics, okay, that people are afraid of. You're afraid of this. Black politics, okay? You're not afraid of this. You're afraid of this. Black politics. Completely black politics. That's what they're afraid of. Okay? They're afraid you're going to come in there and use, oh, you know, um, white people don't do things the way I want them to do it, and I need resp reparations, I'm, I'm a victim, um, you know what I mean, welfare, this, 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 and that, and the other. I need all these different things. They're afraid you're going to use that to run the world. And so far, it has been working. And you got people like, uh, uh, what's his name, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, okay, and so many, 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 many others that these white people are listening to them as much as you are. And I know they're listening to them because they come up to me at work and when I, and I, when I don't know the person, they look at me like, oh, you don't know your heritage, man. Hold up. That nigga ain't my heritage. Excuse my French. That low life ain't my heritage. I don't care how popular he is. He going around saying that things is racism on a bright and sunny, sh uh, shiny day. Okay, when everything is just peaches and cream, he ain't he ain't nothing to me. He can go the hell with the KKK and the skinheads for all I care. I don't need him. I don't need his help. I don't need his help. But what racism is is it is when people feel that you are expendable. You're not needed. There is no use for you. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you some modern day racism that people don't talk about. And even though Jesse Lee Peterson and people like Tommy Sotomayor um, have argued about this, they still don't want to admit that this is a racial statement. When you say it's all about IQs. Okay. So let me get this straight. When white people in your family don't go to college, okay, and they go move to the trailer park when they leave home and, you know, work for the plastic factory, okay, instead of being an entrepreneur like dad or going into the service and becoming a Marine or going out there and, be, and being a big money man, okay, like Donald Trump. Okay, what kind of a white man is that? Is that what he got some nigger in him? Somebody put some put somebody scrape some black off or something and put it in a syringe and put it in him. What is that? Okay. Oh, so it's it's a gene, but yet Indians. A lot of Indians are darker than me. Okay? And a lot of Spanish guys, you know, Latinos um, and Puerto Ricans, okay, are the same as that color as me. Okay? They're going to college. There's, they're, they're, most of them won't even, won't even come into this country unless they go to college. Like, how many Indians you know that didn't go to college? There's more Indians going to college than there are white people going to college. Indians don't know how to survive without going to college. They are the most, they are, they are the most Im immigrated, college-going people you ever want to meet. Yet they're the most arrogant, and and they the ones that don't listen to anybody. I don't understand. Like I said, I'm gonna do a video on it one day. I don't understand how these people go to college because they don't listen to nobody. Guy came in here to fix my um, stove. And I tried to explain to him what the stove was doing. He's like, no, 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 no. What, what, dude, dude, you asked me. As soon as I opened my mouth, no, 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 no,
they stand there and they listen to David Lynn. And David Lynn sees him getting offended and he he wants to have a dialogue with him. So put that mic out there and they get all up in his face and they go, whoa, whoa, ho, 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 ho. And they ask him a question. He tries to answer it. And then, no, 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 no. Wait, they never listen. They never listen. It, it, it's, you know, but to me, they don't have high IQs because they don't listen to nobody. I don't call their abilities high IQs. I don't. I don't call that a high IQ. Okay. Um, so I don't think it is about IQs. I think that's a racial statement. Um, you know, the other thing that's racist is what Biden said. Well, black folks don't know how to register to vote. They don't know how to register. Um, they don't even know where to go uh, to register to vote, and they don't know they they don't know how to go and apply for an ID. It's unfair for a black man to have to show an ID. And so this guy named Kevon, he's here on YouTube. Y'all probably seen the video. He went out to the streets and asked about a hundred and some thousand black folks what their problem is with having voter ID. They says. They pulled the voter ID out of their pocket. What do you mean what's wrong with having voter ID? I got mine right here. So what's Joe Biden talking about? But they voted for him. They all voted for him. But yet they want to know, what's he talking about? See? So this goes on. But what racism really is, is when people think you're expendable. They think that you got an IQ problem. They think that, you know, who taught this stuff? You know... Um, and a lot of these people were atheists to taught this stuff. This is another reason why I'm a Christian. Um, Mormons taught this stuff. Darwin taught this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's so many names out there. I got them on the tip of my tongue. But they taught this stuff. And a lot of these guys are atheists. If you look at their religious background, they're atheists. Okay? And this is why I have a problem with evolution. Because if you look at evolution, and I'm thinking... Evolution is such a big lie because if you use evolution, it doesn't change the fact that everybody started from Africa. Whether you read the Bible or you study evolution, everybody came from us. The black race, the, the African race, which I don't really relate all blacks to Africans. People, a lot of people, you know, that's another racial statement that people have said on the Colin Flaherty channel, black folks need to go back to Africa, which black folks don't really come from Africa. They went through Africa during the time of slavery. They might have been migrating there at that time or uh, were uh, passed through Africa but Africans are more closer to the Jewish race. I mean, I'm sorry, black folks, and I agree with Hebrew Israelites on this, even though I don't agree with the Hebrew Israelites on pretty much anything at all. I do agree with them that black folks are more closer to the, you know, they're more Semitic, and they, you know, belong, they're more related to the Jews Okay, and the Hebrews, the Hebrews is the proper term, and the Hebrews, they say the Hebrews don't exist no more, nobody speaks the Hebrew language, and Hebrews don't exist anymore. Well, people don't call themselves Hebrews that are dark-complected people in Israel, but they know, they identify w with, they identify perfectly in between Jude Judaism and Christianity, and they know how to speak Hebrew. If you find somebody that knows how to speak Hebrew and they are available, there are many of them to do, you'll find out they are black people that live in Israel or in, a, or in the nation surrounding Israel. They are literally Hebrews living in Ethiopia or, uh, you know, one of the mother, uh, you know, um, great places in the Bible. There are still Hebrews 
that exist. And I know this because Hebrews have traveled into America to teach people textual criticism of the Bible. I had a Hebrew guy come to my predominantly white church and teach us textual criticism of the scriptures, of what the Hebrew is trying to say. So I know Hebrews exist. That's not Africa. That's more over there where Israel's at. My goodness. Okay? But anyway, um, racism is not a color issue. Again, it's not this. It's a political issue. Okay? It's a political issue. It's not a color issue. Okay? These same guys out here calling black folks niggers. Okay, they love them some black women. Okay, they love them some black women. You go down south where they was lynching and hanging black folks. Okay, not too far long ago. Okay, you'll see a lot of interracial relationships. Because them same slave traders love them some black women. They've been loving them ever since slavery. Okay, so it ain't this. Okay, it is your politics that they hate which we we can't we I think it's wrong to say we can live without black people even though I say that when I'm mad at black people whenever they riot I say in my videos last thing we need is more niggers you're right we the last thing we need is more rioters and more black lives matter people they all can go to hell we don't need black panther party we don't need black lives matter we don't need Al Sharpton, we don't need Jesse Jackson, we don't need any of these 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 this ghetto trash. We don't need none of it. Okay? We don't need any of it. But we do need black people, even if they're still evolving. They haven't caught up to everybody else yet. They haven't caught up to the Asians, the Indians, and the whites. They haven't caught up yet. Even these, even these Spanish descendants out here know how to have functional families, okay, when they ain't being ghetto, <laughs> okay? But black folks need to catch up. They need to catch up. Black folks can sing them some songs and they can rap some tunes. But when they was given the stage to show these white people what they can do for America, they failed. Okay? And so white folks are still like this when it comes to black folks. Here they come. Here they come. Uh-oh. Here they come. Here they come. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There's three of them. There's three of them. Oh, there's three of them. Oh, oh my God. There's three of them. Three's a crowd. Call the police. Three's a crowd. Let's go back inside and lock the door. Leave them out in the rain. There's three of them. Three's a crowd. That's too many black folks. I know this. Black folks... I am not hating on you. I understand we go through this stuff every day of my life. But I love white people. They are the face of America. If it wasn't for white people, I would still be a outcast in Israel, like a lot of Hebrews are right now. I'd be an outcast in Israel. Nobody don't want you because you ain't Judaic, okay? They still don't like Jesus, so they ain't going to like my dark skin, okay? Or I'd be in Africa. Who knows? You know, in the worst place, who knows where I would be if it wasn't for white people? You know what I'm saying? I got to ask you one thing about slavery. Why didn't they just kill us instead of making us slaves? See, if, if it was the other way around, we'd have just killed white folks, instead of taking them as slaves, except for the women. We'd have been using them, okay, for, 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 the sex, for sex trafficking or something like that. But, because, you know, black men don't have no problem with white women. Any black man to tell you he got a problem with a, with a white woman, he's lying, okay? He ain't got a problem with a white woman, he ain't got a problem with no Asian woman, okay? If he's telling you he does, he's lying, okay? 
because it's in our genes to like white women and it's in our genes to like Asian women, okay? So get out of here. Don't even tr come to me go, oh, I only date, I only date black women. That's because you're racist. Because you're afraid if you try to talk to a white woman, she'll get racist with you or she'll, act, she'll, she'll call the cops or something. Okay, it ain't that you don't, you ain't looking at her. You, get out of here, okay? You a lie, okay? I can understand where you might only marry your sisters when it comes to marriage or, you know, in a steady relationship. But as far as what you find attractive and as far as, you know what I mean, what you like to see running down the beach when you go to the beach, come on now, come on now. Come on now, I know we love our sisters, but come on, come on, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And 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 black women know it's natural for you to like white women. Ask any black woman, tell any black woman that you you ain't got an eye at white women, you don't like white women at all, you can't stand white women, okay? She's going to tell you you a lie. As much as she loves you and she knows you love her to death, she's going to tell you a fat lie. Because if she didn't think that, that, that there was a such thing as a black man not liking white women at all, there wouldn't be so many black women getting mad when a black man dated a white girl and be saying dumb stuff like, you're taking all of our good men. Well, if you was a good one, let me shut up, okay? Racism not a color issue, but there is a natural case for racism. When I go outside and I see clothes hung on on uh, clothespins on on strings, covering up, you know. Our housing complexes making it look like we in the projects when the, this is quality, this is uppity up housing up here. They make it look like we in the projects. We know who's doing that. It ain't black folks. It ain't Asian folks. It ain't white folks. Okay. <laughs> them, them three I can check off right there. We know who got the clothes hanging out there. Okay. When people park out here and block traffic, okay, and I'm closing, when people come out here and they block traffic and they block you in, you got to keep going out there letting them know, hey, man, I'm trying to leave. I'm trying to go to work. You got me blocked in. They don't know how to park in a spot. They got to park in the back of your car. Look, I know we all know all the white folks up here and all the black folks. Okay, and all the Asian folks up here, all the Napoleon folks up here, they know who's doing that. They know who's doing that. We all know who's doing that. When music, okay, is being blasted out here, first of all, the type of music, you can tell from that. When music is blasting out here, out, on, out, out in front of your house, and we got a 9 o'clock curfew, no noise after 9 o'clock, okay? When music is blasting, we know who's doing that. We know exactly what race of people who's doing that. The music speaks for itself as well. And it's not just black folks. There's another group of people I'm not going to mention. But you know we have a nine, you know, you know good and well that the cops was going to eventually come when you out here at 11 o'clock at night got your music blasting. Somebody trying to go to sleep, they got a big day ahead of them tomorrow. Somebody going to call the cops. You should have been expecting it. Don't get mad. Because you shouldn't have had it going on. Okay? But there's a natural case to racism. Like I mentioned, going to work every day. There's attitudes. Indians have attitudes to get them in trouble. Okay? Lucky for them, they're always in the highest job position, so people are afraid of them. But they have a very arrogant attitude that gets them in trouble all the time. Okay? Black folks. Look, we know what black folks do. Even black folks make jokes about why they keep doing it. Okay? Who's late for work every day? Why is that a black thing? 
And if it is a black thing, it's not funny. It might be funny, you, you know what I'm saying, when you ain't done it in a while. But when it's done every single day like clockwork, it's not funny. Okay? You don't need to be late. Think ahead like everybody else. You know what? I have to be at work at a certain time. So the babysitter needs to be here at a certain time. I need to be done eating at a certain time. No, don't leave here late and then go to McDonald's. Don't leave here late and then go to work and eat before I sign in. Come on, man. Like, come on, man. And then, oh, you know, when your white boss yells at you because you keep, you keep coming in late and you always want to go straight to the cafeteria when you get to work, your white boss say something, oh, Black Lives Matter. We sick of cops. Well, it wasn't a cop that yelled at you. It was, it was a white lady in a dress. Okay? But, oh, oh, Black Lives Matter. You know, give me a break, man. We, there is a natural case for racism. White people know what, what race is. Just like I, white people will come to me and they'll talk about Indians. They'll talk about Africans. Okay? They'll talk about some of these Napoleons around here. Okay? But I, I know when I'm not around, they probably talk about black folks too. Okay? But most of my white counterparts, they feel that they can talk to me because they know that I go out of my way to stay out of black politics. Okay? Most of them were shocked to find out that I'm not a Democrat. And I've made a lot of friends by not being a Democrat because it's not about this. It's about politics. It's about what we believe. It's about whether or not we can be honest with each other. Okay? And, that's, and I'm going to stop there. You know what I'm saying? But there's three kinds of racism. Okay? There's three. Racism, what racism is is when people expend you. They, they think you're expendable. They don't, they, 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 they think that, you know, I should suffer and live in the ghetto and stay out of white neighborhoods because of the number of black people committing crime. So, it would be better off for me to just, even though I'm not a ghetto type of person, even though I'm a conservative, even though I'm trying to be an entrepreneur, I'm trying to build a business, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm moving from place to place, trying to live better, a better life for myself and all like that. They want me to stay out of the white neighborhoods and move into the ghettos to do what? To make them feel safe. Even though I'm not one of these kind of people that would come into their house and break, come into their neighborhood and break into their house and whatnot, okay? I'm not the kind of person, they know I'm not the kind of person, but they would rather me just get together with my people, okay? All the good black people get together with the bad black people and just stay over there. And I've heard white people have these conversations where I don't care. I just wish they all go back to Africa, or you know what I mean? Because, like, you can't trust none of them. Well, how many times did I think a white man had my back and when he got around his white friends, all of a sudden everything was about my black behind and how dumb my black behind was for even trying to be there, okay? Um, you can't be trusted either, white folks. I can't trust you. I can't trust you to know the difference between me and excuse my French, a nigger. Okay? And you ask any conservative, he'll be honest about that. One thing that we don't like about white people is when white people don't know the difference between an uh, 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 outstanding black man and a nigger. Okay? The dude even called himself a nigger. He called everybody a nigger. He called his mama a nigger. You don't know the difference between me and him? And then, you know, I meet these white girls. You know what I mean? I ain't got a problem with white girls, but I hate when white girls don't know the difference between a black man and this low-life piece of whatever he is. Okay? 
If you like black men that sag their pants, you don't want to be with D-Roy Cruz because you'll cheat on D-Roy Cruz with a dude that sags his pants. Okay, if you don't know the difference between D-Roy Cruz and a black man that sags his pants, please get out my face right now. Because I'm about to slap you and then kill him on, with some black on black crap. Because that's just dumb. That's some dumb white shit right there. Excuse my French. I'm getting emotional. That's some dumb crap. I hate when people do that to me. Oh, Cruz is good. And we, you know, we got all these issues and we, we, we looking around and wondering who we can trust. Now, either you got to be afraid of this dude or you, you know, or, or something's going on there. But... The thing is, white people, in closing, white people are responsible to know the difference between black and black. I know the difference between white and white. And if you say that black lives matter, if, if you white and you say in Black Lives Matter and you say you don't have a racist bone in your body and all like that, you should know the difference. Don't say, I don't have a racist bone in my body because even though I hate all these different things, these black politics, I'm going to treat this black person over here that has those black politics, okay, just like I treat D. Roy Cruz and Brandon Tatum. While I scream Black Lives Matter, while I hate black folks because I'm afraid that they'll rape my daughter and kill me if I don't scream Black Lives Matter and wear my Black Lives Matter t-shirt every time the cops kill another black person. Okay? And that's the thing. Um, so that was long, but there was no way for me to talk about it without it being long. I got it all out. Okay, I didn't get it out yesterday. The video I did yesterday um, was almost a, almost an hour and 30 minutes long. But I'm glad I got it out. I'm glad I, I got it done. One more thing. Um, well, I already said that. You, We got to learn to separate white from white issues and black from black issues and there is a big separation between black folks and other black folks and um, you know we we have to separate our cultures there's nothing wrong with that we have to separate our cultures so that people know who we are because we're not all alike and Donald Trump showed the world that not all black folks are alike, not all Spanish people are alike, not all races are alike just because they're the same race. There's, there's, there's Republicans and Democrats in every race. There's Republicans and Democrats outside this country. There were people voting for Donald Trump, okay, outside this country, okay? Um, it make me want to run away and go to another country, you know, but... Um, God bless you, D-Roy Cruz, your life applications officer. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps. Black folks, you need to understand that I sympathize with you, but I don't sympathize with your so-called pro-blackness. There is no such thing. I don't sympathize with your black politics. I don't sympathize with that. I sympathize... Uh, I sympathize with you being a black man or woman trying to be an American and learn what that means. Take your sweet time, that's fine. But you need to learn what that means, okay? It doesn't mean these people coming up here blasting their music, looking for attention at 11 o'clock at night. It doesn't mean sagging your pants. It doesn't mean black lives matter. It does not mean going to work and can't never get to work on time, taking extra long breaks and, and, and acting a fool. And then the minute somebody say something to you, it don't matter what color of skin he is. It could be a black man. He say something to you, black lives matter. I'm tired of people hating on my blackness. I'm sick and tired of stuff. We're going to get some respect. 
get out, okay? I'm going to start sounding like racist white man. Get out. Go, go, go back to whatever country you think you come from. They'll probably kick you out of Africa. Because they ain't screaming Black Lives Matter in Africa. And they don't even like black folks, most of them. You got nowhere to run, black folks. You got nowhere to run. Me and a black dude was talking about this yesterday. You got nowhere to run. Because black... Because African people don't like you. Indian people don't like you. Spanish people don't like you. White people are having a problem with you. Half of them. Asian people definitely don't like you. Okay? There's just nobody likes you. And it's not this for the last time. It's not your skin color. It is... Your politics that they don't like. Because your politics are non-American. But at the same time, we do, because of our politics, because we have a bad reputation, we have to deal with not only the racist people, but we got to deal with white people that are afraid of us. We got to deal with white people that don't trust us. We got to deal with white people who don't do their homework and they don't think they have to do their homework they don't think that they have to know the difference okay you do know you do know you do that yeah, can't get it out you do need to know the difference because knowing the difference is what protects you just like i've learned over the years i can tell if i can sit in a conversation with a group of white folks as soon as I walk into the room, by their first reaction and by the first things that come out of their mouth. Because if they try to act like they're too pro-black, then I need to run. If they think they can't be themselves, I need to run. Okay? And if they think that they need to focus on me, I need to run. And that is how you deal with racism. You don't deal with racism by rioting. You don't deal with racism by, by you know, trying to demand respect that everybody else ain't getting. You don't, you don't deal with racism by trying to fight the government and, 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 you know, make the government do something special for you that it ain't doing for other people. Okay? And privilege, I said I was closing, privilege is something that you achieve on your own. Black folks can get privilege too. I got privilege. Okay? I got privilege. When I go to work, most people, not all of them, but most people know who I am. Every now and then they try to act like they don't, but they know who I am. And they know the difference. Because why? When things could have been violent, when, 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 when the N-word was coming out of somebody's mouth and, you know, it could have been a black-on-black -black thing, they seen the way I handled it, they know that I'm different. Because I handled that black man the same way I would a white man. If a white man had walked in that office, started threatening and, and, and saying uh, crap in the police department, like he gonna go in there and set it off in the police department in front of all these guns. They seen the way I handled it. And I responded to him as, okay, sir, whatever. But this is the police department, okay? Um, this ain't Homewood and Frankstown, brother. <laughs> this is the police department, okay? Don't come in here with that. Unless you want to be taken out of here in handcuffs. Uh, lieutenant right there. Anything else you want to argue about, there he is right there. You want me to have him come in here and talk to you? Okay. And I dealt with white people the same way. I didn't get a... Nigga, who you think you're talking about? Talk, step outside, nigga. You know, I didn't do that. I don't do that. I ain't done that since I was a kid. I stopped doing that when I left Homewood and Frankstown a long time ago. And seen how the other half lives. How they deal with crime. How they deal with, you know, people that don't know how to behave themselves. There's a proper way to deal with people. And I dealt with it. Okay? I learned 
from my mistakes. I learn from seeing how the other half lives. I learn from knowing that there's people out there that I have to set the example in front of. I had to set the example not only in front of people that love me and, and, and got my back, but I had to set the example in front of my enemies so they know that we're not all alike and that um, there is a big difference. And don't hate the difference, okay? Hate why we're different. Okay? Don't hate the messenger. Hate the truth. Okay? Or you can hate the messenger if you want to, but you can't escape the truth. The truth will just keep on, you know, leaving you out in the rain crying if you keep it up. I got to get out of here. I didn't done what I did yesterday. Went into an went into an hour. Boy, you know, this must be a good video. It better, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to record this video, and if you don't watch the whole thing, okay. God bless you. Have a great day. D-Word Cruise, your life applications officer. Thank you for watching.